I think it's time that we catch up on some reviews. Hi, my name is Sarah Freshly, and welcome to Freshly Read Books. So for this week, I'm going to be doing five book reviews in five days, each under five minutes, and all from the International Booker Prize long list. I guess you could call this the Freshly Five and Five in Five. You know what, never mind, you don't have to call it that. This is just a way for me to catch up on some of the books that I have not yet reviewed that are on the International Booker long list, but have not made it to the short list. And also as a way to put a little less pressure on myself for these book reviews. So that means every day of the week, there will be a new review for one of the books that have been long listed, not short listed for the International Booker Prize. So the schedule is as follows. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So let's not waste any more time and jump right into it. Today we're going to be talking about Love in the Big City by Anton Hur. Nope, that's the translator. By Sung Young Park, translated by Anton Hur, who is also the translator for Cursed Bunny, a collection of short stories that did make it to the Booker long list short list. What is this sentence? Love in the Big City is about Young and it follows him through the different stages of his life and is mainly broken out by four parts. So even though it is all about Young, it does feel a little bit different. Like each story feels very distinct from each other and like they're about different things, even though they are all about the same person and they are in the correct order of his life. The narrator Young is very sarcastic and self-deprecating and feels very now, if that makes sense. Like he feels very much like a young adult living in the world today. Now each of the parts in this book starts at like towards the end and then it catches you up from the beginning and then up until that point and maybe a little after. They focus on specific relationships in Young's life including his best friend Jae Hee, uh, boyfriends that he has, and also his relationship with his mother who is ill. I think that because of the way that each of these parts start by telling you the end first it does give you this weird feeling that like nothing is going to last forever and that things are kind of like doomed from the start. It feels almost dismal to watch Young start a relationship with someone when you already know the outcome. Overall, I think this book was pretty good, but not great because nothing really does last throughout this story and you know that going into it. I found myself caring less and less about what's going on in the present moment, which is maybe part of the purpose, but it did leave me being feeling very separated from the story. I loved the friendship between Jae Hee and Young, and it was really nice to read that part. But when she started creating her own life separate from Young, then you don't really hear about her anymore, which I guess makes sense that she's like completely confined to the part of the book that is named after her but it was still kind of sad. And I really wish that that relationship was explored further or that it was brought up more often throughout Young's life later. But I mean, things happen. You're not always like super close friends with the people that you used to be super close friends with. So I get it. It just, because these are the big relationships that impacted his life, I expected that to have a bigger impact going forward since it was the first relationship that we saw. I think this book really at its core is about a young man that is trying to create his own home for himself while others around him seem to be able to do it very easily. But more than that, maybe it's about how he is able to create this for himself at several points in his life, but because it is many, because each of them doesn't last like his entire life, it's seen almost as a failure, but in reality, like he did have these nice places for the time period that they lasted in his life. But overall, I found myself pretty uninterested in the book and I really did have to push through to get to the end. I was much more interested in the beginning of this book than I was towards the end of it. However, there were some like great thoughts that were spread out throughout this book and like interesting things to kind of think about and chew on. So that was kind of nice. Overall, would the Booker Frog and I recommend this book? That's gonna be a no. That is of course purely my own experience with this book. I have seen other people that have really loved this book. So, you know, maybe seek out more reviews if this is something that you were really excited about. And unfortunately, like it was good, but it just it wasn't amazing. I didn't think that it did anything particularly that I would say like, oh yeah, definitely read this book. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this style of review since I'll be doing it all this week. So make sure to subscribe and I will see you for tomorrow's book. Bye.